Ever wondered how websites remember your preferences or stay logged in even after you close the tab? The magic behind this is cookies. In the vast world of web development, cookies play an integral role. But what exactly are these cookies we're talking about? No, they're not the delicious baked treats we all love. In the context of web development, cookies are small pieces of data sent by a server and stored on your browser. Think of them like small memory aids that a website uses to remember things about you or your visit. They are created when you load a website, and from then on they reside in your browser, accompanying you as you navigate through the web. But why are they so important? Well, cookies serve several crucial functions. For starters, they're responsible for session management. This means they keep track of your activities on a website during a session. So if you're shopping online and you add items to your cart, Cookies are the ones ensuring those items stay in your cart as you continue browsing. Cookies are also the champions of personalization. They remember your preferences, like language or theme, and apply them every time you visit the site. So the next time you find a website addressing you by your name or displaying in your preferred language, you know who to thank. Moreover, cookies play a pivotal role in tracking. They monitor and record your interactions with a website, providing valuable insights to the web developers. This tracking helps in improving website functionality and tailoring user experiences. And perhaps most importantly, cookies are essential for authentication. They keep you logged in on websites, saving you from the hassle of entering your login details every time you visit. However, it's crucial to note that while cookies are incredibly helpful, they should be handled with care, especially when dealing with sensitive user data. Now that you know what cookies are and their importance, let's dive into how to handle them. First things first, to use cookies, we need to create them. Now, cookies are typically set by the server and sent in the HTTP response headers. But what does this mean? It simply means that when a server sends a page to a user's browser, it also sends a bit of data that the browser stores. This data is a cookie. Each programming language has its own way of creating cookies. Let's take a look at how you can create a cookie in Java Servlet, PHP and JavaScript. In Java Servlet, you would create a new cookie object and set its name and value. For example, you might create a cookie named Username and give it a value of John Doe. You can also set an expiration time for the cookie, which tells the browser how long to store it. Once you've set up the cookie, you add it to the HTTP response. In PHP, it's a bit different. You use the setCookie function to create a cookie. This function takes several parameters, including the name and value of the cookie, the expiration time, and the path where the cookie is valid. For instance, you might create a cookie named Username, give it a value of John Doe, and set it to expire in one hour. When it comes to JavaScript, things are a bit more straightforward. You simply assign a string to the document.cookie property. This string should include the name and value of the cookie, as well as optional attributes like the expiration date and path. So there you have it. Whether you're working with Java Servlet, PHP, or JavaScript, Creating a cookie is a matter of defining its name, value, and other attributes, and then adding it to the HTTP response. That's how you create a cookie, but how do we read the data stored in them? Let's find out. Cookies are of no use if we cannot read the data stored in them. This is where we dive into the art of reading cookies. In the world of web development, cookies that are sent by the client are included in the HTTP request headers. This means we can retrieve and pass cookies in our server-side code, Let's kick things off with Java Servlet. To read cookies in Java Servlet, we use the getCookies method that belongs to the HTTP Servlet request interface. This method returns an array of cookie objects. We can then loop through these objects and get the name and value of each cookie. Here's a quick example. Cookie cookies equal sign request dot get cookies. If cookies equal sign null. Moving on to PHP, we can retrieve cookies using the superglobal dollar underscore cookie array. This array holds a record of all cookies sent by the HTTP request. To read a specific cookie, we can access it by its name, like so, if I set dollar underscore cookie. Finally, let's look at JavaScript. To read cookies on the client side, we can use the document.cookie property, which returns all cookies associated with the document. We can split this string at each semicolon to get an array of all cookies, and then split each cookie at the equals sign to get the name and value var cookies equal sign document dot cookie split cookies for each function cookie 
As you can see, reading cookies is a straightforward process in web development. Whether you're using Java Servlet, PHP, or JavaScript, the process remains largely the same. Retrieve the cookie, pass the data, and process it as needed. Reading cookies is simple, right? Now what if we want to change the data in a cookie? Let's explore. Just like updating data in a database, we can also update the data stored in cookies. Now, updating a cookie isn't like some techie magic trick. It's quite straightforward, really. Let's say you've set a cookie and now you want to update the value, or perhaps modify its attributes such as the expiration time. Well, all you need to do is set a new value for the cookie or adjust its attributes, and voila, your cookie is updated. Consider a Java Servlet scenario. To update a cookie, you'd create a new cookie object with the same name but a new value. Like this, cookie cookie equals new cookie, followed by the name and the new value in parentheses. Then you'd add this new cookie to the response with response dot add cookie cookie. Now, if you're more into PHP, it's just as easy. To update a cookie, you'd use the set cookie function, passing the name of the cookie, the new value, and other optional parameters like the expiration time and the path. It would look something like this. Set cookie, followed by the name, new value, and time plus 3600 in parentheses. And for the JavaScript enthusiasts out there, you can also update cookies on the client side. Just use the document cookie property and assign it a string that includes the cookie name, equals sign, new value, and optional parameters like expiry and path. It's as simple as this. Document.cookie equals name equals new value, expires equals Thursday 18 December 2025 12 o'clock UTC path equals slash. So you see updating cookies is just as easy as creating and reading them. You just need to know the right commands and when to use them. Updating cookies is pretty straightforward, but how do we get rid of a cookie when we no longer need it? Let's see. Sometimes we need to delete cookies. Let's see how we can do that. Deleting cookies is a straightforward process. It's all about setting their expiration time to a past date. In essence, you're telling the browser that the cookie has expired and it should be discarded. In Java Servlet, this is how you can delete a cookie. You create a new cookie object with the same name as the cookie you want to delete and set its maximum age to zero. Subsequently, you add this cookie to the response. PHP offers a similar approach. You call the setCookie function with the name of the cookie you want to delete and set its expiration time to a past date typically one hour in the past. On the client side, using JavaScript, you can delete a cookie by setting its value to an empty string and its expiration date to January 1st, 1970, which is a date in the past. Now that we've covered deleting cookies, let's move on to some best practices for handling them. Firstly, it's crucial to store sensitive information securely. Avoid storing passwords or personal data in cookies. If you must store such information, make sure it's encrypted. Secondly, set appropriate expiration times for cookies. Cookies with longer lifetimes can pose a security risk. On the other hand, cookies that expire too quickly can lead to a poor user experience. Thirdly, use HTTPS to encrypt cookie data during transmission. This prevents interception and ensures that your user's data remains secure. Lastly, be mindful of cookie size limits. Browsers have restrictions on the maximum size of cookies. Overly large cookies can lead to performance issues and may even be rejected by the browser. That's all about handling cookies in web development. Remember, cookies are a powerful tool when used correctly, so use them wisely.